Now, MATLAB, um, although it only seems works to four decimal places, is actually far more precise than that. Uh, to show all values, we can change the way that MATLAB displays commands by using the format command. So, for example, if I write in pi, we can see it's 3.1416. But as I said, if we change the format to write format long, and we do pi again, you can see that pi is actually there into a much more precise level. Okay. As an engineer, you might want to work in scientific notation all the time. And obviously to do that, if we put, that, put it back to short, okay, if we, if we want to work in scientific notation, um, we can actually write short e. And now when we write pi times, I don't know, let's go for 10, uh, what's that? 10 million, 100 million, you can see that we've got now um, in scientific notation, if we write in pi, you can see it's 3 times 3.1416 times 10 to the power of 0, which is obviously 1, okay? And obviously we could also write format long e, which will do the same thing, um, but with more, precise, more precision. Now, variables. Okay, so you may have noticed that when we've entered a command, 2 plus 3 times 4, or 2, yeah, 2 plus 3 times 4. You notice that it comes up with ants here, and then you notice in the workspace, we have this thing called ants here, uh, which has got a value of 14. And this is a variable name that MATLAB gives to an undefined output in the command window. Okay, um, so, and like I said, once we, if we, and you can actually use ants um, and do fun things with it. And obviously, you get redefines answer here as 2 because it's taken 14 divided by 7, and clearly the answer is 2. Okay, so, but but obviously that's, yeah, that's useful. That's like clicking answer in your calculator. But what happens with MATLAB is you can actually define your own variables by assigning a value to a variable. For example, if we did x equals 2 plus 3 times 4, then you can see that in the workspace we now have a value variable called x, which has a value of 14, okay? We could also define, say, y equals 2 times 3, okay? And now clearly you've got a value variable called y um, that's, uh, that's got a value of 6, okay? And let's do z, which equals x plus y, and so 14 plus 6 should be a value of 20. And so you can see that we've got um, those three variables been defined. And obviously you can then do all sorts of things with those variables, you know, to get different numbers like that. In fact, let's put it in back in a short mode. Okay, so square root of x um, is three point seven one seven four one seven. Okay, now notice that what what we've been doing with the, when we've been defining these variables is we've we've said something equals and then we write something you know like the sum that it's going to equals. What doesn't work is if you write like say three plus four equals x. That won't work because MATLAB doesn't really understand the way that works. Okay, it's going to be variable name equals the value. Okay, now variable names I've obviously just used x, y, and z here, but variable names basically can be any combination of letters and numbers. Okay, but it's always going to start with a letter. Okay, you can't have spaces also, but you can use the underscore. So it's any any number of letters or numbers must start with a number. And you can use an underscore, okay? Um, so things like average value is can, is, is okay. So value equals, I don't know, that's x plus y divided by 2. That works. And I get a variable called average value in here, okay? Um, I could write, I don't know, something like net cost equals z. That's fine, okay? Um, you know, and x3 equals, you know, x plus y plus z. You know, all those sorts of things. They're all perfectly acceptable variable names. What's not um, acceptable are things like average value. Oops, average value equals, you know, average value. Yeah, because obviously that looks like average minus value. 2x, whoops. So 2x doesn't work equals, I oh know, x. Yeah, so it doesn't work. And then um, on obviously... You know, something like, I don't know, at fuel equals 2 doesn't work. Again, there's lots of things else. So, yeah, the other thing that, to notice is that um, 
that uh, uh, variables are also case sensitive. So something like um, radius with a little r, like this, does not equal, um, is not the same thing as radius or even radius. Okay, they're all different variables in MATLAB. Okay, for example, radius, oops, radius oops, equals one. Yeah, radius equals two. Radius, oops, let's type it correctly, equals three. You can see that all three of those feature in the command window as separate um, values. Okay. Now to clear the command uh, to clear the command window CLC to clear the variable window. Say we wanted to get rid of all those variables, so we just type clear and they will disappear. Okay. Now let's uh, let's let's uh, do a little uh, um, thing here. Um, notice that when you do when you type a command in MATLAB, so x equals two plus three, you can see that when I press return. Um, it will show me the output, okay, which is you know perhaps helpful. But there are many times when you don't actually want MATLAB to show the output, and to do that, you press two plus three, and then you press a semicolon at the end, okay. And if I click that, notice that it suppresses the output, but it still defines that in the command window. If I do y equals x plus two, and press that, notice that it's now defined y as a value of seven, but it suppresses the output, and that's very useful, okay, because there are things you can do in MATLAB with loops and various other things, where if you don't suppress the output, you get pages and pages of a script running, and that massively slows down the speed with which you can do various things. By hiding it from it, it displaying the output as you're running it, um, it's uh, about much, much, you get much faster running pieces of script, okay? So for example, um, you know, if I type in fuel, fuel consumption, yeah, Notice that that's a perfectly valid variable name. I'm going to put 45.6, okay? And if I write, to, okay, well, average consumption, um, let's call that on my variable there. I'm going to call that 34.5, and I suppress the output. And you can see that I've defined those two variables in the in the workspace um, there, despite not showing the thing. And of course, you can define variables using other variables. So, for example, if I type in radius equals, I don't know, 2.5, I suppress the output. I don't need to worry too much. I know the area of, of something with a radius of 2.5 is going to be pi times by the radius squared. Okay, so that area is 19.6350. And so what I could actually write, well, actually, my, I've noticed that my circle is actually 2.4 wide. Okay, and I can actually then rerun the area command. Now, one way to do that is to type A and use the up arrow, and I get the previous command, because that was the previous command that started with A. Or the other alternative to rerun the command is actually just to take it from the command window. There it is. I drag it out, drop it in, and I can rerun that command. And there I get my new area. Okay. Now, the reason why I use the capital A here is there is actually a function called area um, in MATLAB. Um, if I type, oops, yeah. Yeah, there's a function in MATLAB called area, which is the area of a 2D plot, okay? So. So if you've been following along, there should be quite a few variables in the workspace window, and there's a few things you can do. If we type in whose, we get the list of the variables, how big they are, how many bytes that it takes up, and the class of the variable. There's various different classes. Double is sort of the default, I guess, um, for a number of different types of variables. Um, if we type in clear, and then type whose again, notice that we get nothing back because we've cleared all the variables. Okay. So you probably notice that as we're working through MATLAB, you can see that the command window has been filling up with the various commands we've been using. Okay, and if you, like I said, if you double click on a on a command, um, if you, or you can either drag it in or double click, and it actually runs the command. You see, um, and it'll actually rerun those commands. And like I said, if you use the up arrow, you can actually scroll through the up arrow in the command window. You can actually scroll through the various commands that have been running 
um, as well. So it's an easy way to get back to a command if you want to re rerun something. Now, MATLAB's able to do things um, that perhaps your own calculator might have trouble with. It can actually deal with things like where the output is is uh, of the computation is infinite. Okay, for example, if we said that x equals two and y equals zero, say, and z equals x divided by y, well, that's going to be two divided by zero. And notice that MATLAB comes out as something that says it's infinite. Okay, um, and sometimes. It is actually easy. It is useful to find to define variable as infinity or minus infinity. So if we said x equals minus infinity, okay. So there it is. And the x equals minus infinity. Y equals x divided by two. Well, y, if x, you know, half of the infinity or half of minus infinity is still infinity. And then if we did z equals x divided by infinity, we've got minus infinity divided by infinity. Well, that is actually undefined, which comes out as not a number. Okay, since the mathematical concept of minus infinity divided by, divided by infinity is ill-defined. Okay, again, it's occasionally useful to deliberately set a value as not a number. Okay, as you may discover with experience. Now, MATLAB can do various things like complex numbers, letters, words, and other structures and true or false uh, statements and values okay but they're but they're beyond the scope of this module or this this bit of matlab to start with okay um but if you want to uh, um if you want to just try it out i'm going to say new var equals uh, in in single quotes i am text okay you actually get a new variable with i am text and notice that we've got this thing it's called a string okay um, that's the type of uh, type, another type of variable. When I open whose, you can see that we've got this class called char because it's got characters in there. Okay, so that concludes chapter one in the MATLAB uh, uh, as a calculator chapter. Okay, um, notice in the in the course notes we've got a list of commands um, in the notes that um, that just give you some of the some of the commands that we've used in this uh, in this lecture, okay? And then at the end of the chapter one, there's a worksheet uh, with some questions that you should be able to go through and, uh, and work out using MATLAB as a calculator, okay? Um, thank you very much for listening and watching.